really excited to share the findings of our clinical trial today. And um, with, with failure after failure in Alzheimer's disease, um, uh, you know, our entire team as well as our patients um, and our colleagues are really excited to share uh, really what really can be viewed as a bright light in the field of Alzheimer's disease prevention and risk reduction. Uh, so our, our study was published uh, in the Journal of Alzheimer's and Dementia, uh, the Journal of the Alzheimer's Association, and the title was Individualized Clinical Management of People at Risk for Alzheimer's Dementia. And what we did is in a real life, real world clinical setting, we enrolled people at risk for Alzheimer's disease dementia. And we enrolled them across the spectrum of Alzheimer's disease. People with no cognitive impairment, normal patients with no amyloid in their brain, those those patients would be considered as primary prevention of Alzheimer's disease. Then we also enrolled patients that had preclinical Alzheimer's disease, meaning they had no symptoms, but they had Alzheimer's disease brewing in their brain. Now that may be shocking and, and scary, but 46 million Americans currently have preclinical Alzheimer's disease. They have amyloid in their brain and they don't even know it. So we included primary prevention, we included secondary prevention, which includes preclinical Alzheimer's. We also included people with subjective cognitive impairment, meaning mild memory glitches here and there, but no amyloid in their brain. And then finally, we included people with mild cognitive impairment due to Alzheimer's disease. So people that had mild memory glitches, didn't qualify for dementia, they could still take care of themselves, but they had amyloid. So stage two of Alzheimer's disease is called mild cognitive impairment due to Alzheimer's disease. Stage three is called Alzheimer's disease dementia. And going back to stage one is preclinical Alzheimer's disease. So this study was very unique because it included, really for the first time, patients across the entire clinical spectrum of Alzheimer's disease from primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention. And the other part about this study that was unique is that we included a wide variety of ages. Um, our minimum age requirement was age 25 years old. Most people aren't aware that Alzheimer's disease begins in the brain decades, 20, 30, possibly more, 20 to 30 years before um, symptoms. So amyloid begins, other pathologies begin, but the disease is beginning silently. So it was our goal to enroll people across um, really all age ranges, and our age range was between 25 and 86. And the take home point of this study is that we used an individualized clinical management approach where we really learned everything we could about the patients. We learned about their risk factors, their blood levels, their homocysteine, their blood sugar, their cholesterol, their exercise patterns, their sleep patterns, do they meditate? We looked at every evidence-based and safe intervention possible. And on average, people got 21 different interventions. And the take home point of the study is that from baseline to 18 months, when compared to historical control cohorts. We compared our clinic patients and our study patients with uh, very large national in, uh, cohorts, uh, one called the NAC cohort with 38,000 people and one called the Rush cohort at, at Rush University in Chicago that had over 3,000 patients to compare the trajectory of patients that don't have interventions that were very similar to our patients with patients like ours that get multimodal what we call clinical precision medicine care or individualized care. So when the people that got the 21 individualized, not one size fits all approach interventions, uh, both groups had significant improvements from baseline to 18 months. Now, this is the, the confusing part. In the prevention group, meaning primary prevention and secondary prevention, preclinical Alzheimer's, whether you followed greater than 60% of the recommendations or less than 60% of the recommendations, both groups had significant benefits when compared to a natural history control cohort. However, when someone was already diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment due to Alzheimer's disease, only the patients that followed greater than 60% of the recommendations had significant improvements. And one of the really key findings of the study that was extremely exciting to me and, and our whole team and the patients and their caregivers of course is that patients with MCI due to AD 18 months later that followed greater than 60 percent of the advice had improved cognition from baseline 18 months later and um, I think most people in the field um, may say is that really possible uh, well it was um, and that's really exciting so I think that uh, physicians struggle that you know what the heck do we do with patients with MCI there's no FDA approved drugs well individualized clinical management assessing risk factors blood pressure control getting to lower targets 120s over 70s based on the sprint mind trial getting blood sugar levels under control exercise on a regular basis the list goes on and on um, is a way to really optimize cognition and, and also a great part was uh, very very well tolerated these interventions um, uh, were, were generally safe
So the take home point overall is that um, individualized clinical management for people at risk for Alzheimer's disease um, now is really um, an evidence-based approach and uh, clinicians, whether uh, from a subspecialty practice to primary care, um, can take uh, the learnings from this study and apply to clinical practice today.